Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation. This is Breach Wanderers, a roguelike deck builder that I'm very excited to be checking out here today. It has stacked up some very positive reviews over the course of its early access period, and it just released a new big update that it calls a new beginning for the game, as it gears up for 1.0 release in 2023 here. So I'm going to be popping on in. I've, I've been wanting to check this out for a very long time, but a new beginning update seems like a really good time to do that. So let's pop in and see why people enjoy this one so much. Uh, you know, might as well go with one that has a couple options, just in case I hate whatever this is. Welcome to your first combat. We will now take you through the basics of the combat system. This is where you'll see your current character health, shields, and status effect. When you receive status effects, you can click on your character to read more. This is your mana. You need it for most of your cards. There's no need to spend all your mana in one turn because excess mana retains between rounds. Okay, that is very noteworthy. So it looks like we gain four mana a turn, but we can like hold on to it if we don't use it. I mean, that's nice. This is your hand. You can play these cards this turn. You draw cards from your deck on the left. Played cards go into your discard pile on the right. When your deck is empty, discard pile is shuffled. Yep, standard there. Drag a card to the battlefield to play it. Click and hold a card in your hand and a detailed pop-up about it will appear. Good luck. Okay, so what do we got? We got gain two mana, two more mana if you had no mana. We've got deal damage to any enemy equal to 80% of its maximum frost. Damage modifiers are halved on this card. Gain two mana, apply three frost to the first enemy. Heal zero, interesting. Gain two mana, gain four shield if played after a mana card. So it seems like chilling focus is logical. And then, I guess we do the shield, gain the mana. Pierce, steal damage equal to 80% of its frost. Maximum frost. All right. And then we have the mend, we have the focus. We might as well use the focus. Even though, like, there's really no point. Because theoretically, let me just play this to see if I understand correctly that we are going to be going back up. Yeah. Oh, wait! It overflows? I would not have anticipated that it could overflow past 10. Okay. Alright, that's good intel. Good intel. Apply 20 frost to any enemy and then deal 20 damage to it if it's frozen. Alright. I do appreciate, like, hands up in the air, praising the game that it's not just do 6 damage, block 6 damage. You know, like... Thank God. Like, I'm sure that some basic cards exist. Yeah, like gain shield, but absolutely way more interesting cards than they typically throw at you as your first character in a deck builder. Uh, deal damage equal to the frost. So apply the frost. You are now frozen. So does it trigger based off of the maximum froze, frozen meter, like, right away? Hold on. Two mana, four played after mana card. Twelve damage to any enemy and six to all. This enemy skips its next action. Your next card... Wait. This enemy skips its next action. Your next card is free and has no effect. Reduce all frost and fix frost received by half. Lose two ranks. What the heck? I think that's probably saying... If we're frozen? Because this sure looks like it does something. But if you are frozen and not doing anything, then theoretically you might as well... Uh, pop this fool with this. We might be able to get you with just a random AoE before you would be able to play anyways. Okay. I mean, I suppose we can just go ahead and pierce. Gain the mana. I don't think I even need to shield. The shield looks like it's capped at 10. Protects your health at the start of your turn. If your shield is higher than the max value, it gets reduced to the max value. Gotcha can conserve up to your maximum. Oh, okay. So we can conserve 10 and we can go up to 14. So our true maximum, our true maximum is our max plus our, you know, per turn modifier. Uh, do we have another AOE attack? We do indeed. Bye-bye. All right. There, there's like enough different stuff already that I'm really interested. Uh, it brings you in and out of the breach safely, gathers energy to warp in items. What the hell? Choose a card. Introspection, draw two for the cost of three. Gain Adept two, Mana Boost two, Growth three. Adept, uh, 
Increase status applied by cars by 25%. For what? Two turns, I'm guessing, is what the two means? Uh, mana boost. Every turn, gain two extra mana for two turns? This seems like legit. Increase your max of mana by one per rank. Gain an extra one mana every turn for every six ranks. This seems really good. Monster card? Every enemy has a small pool of two cards. When you defeat them, you will receive one of these cards as a reward choice. That is so cool. Give vulnerable to, like, oh my god, that opens up so much decision making in the uh, pathway draft. Like, you could be bad against a certain enemy, but you really want their card. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, give vulnerable two to the first two enemies and deal six damage to them. It costs just two mana. Is that just all it is? It does seem pretty cool. This is really nice long term. I'm going to take it. Uh, we, we have the option to go fight another one of these book boys if we want. There's an elite or two up here. Let's go towards the path of the elite. Okay. Two mana, apply three frost to the first enemy. Four shield if played after a mana card. They are both intending to attack me. So, like, we'll do this. Apply the frost right away. 14. So, we're going to be taking taking two. If we don't have any kind of way to shield. But we could also freeze somebody. Apply 20 frost. And then deal 20 if they are frozen. So, that seems pretty easy to do. I guess certain enemies maybe have bigger frost meters. Because, yeah, you're... Very much frozen now. That uses all of our mana. We could freeze you here, but we really don't need to. Twelve to any enemy and six to everybody actually means this is 18 damage. For the same reason as before, maybe I'll draw an AoE card and that can be like a really cost-effective play. Or not. Okay. Two mana apply three frost to the first. That freezes you. Buys us an extra turn to potentially play around. So their frost meter slowly goes up. Lose two ranks at the end of the turn of frozen. Gotcha. A debt. Two, we might as well. Mend, there's no reason. Alright. Good deal. So we are getting quite a bit more mana. Our new max cap is 13, but and we get plus six per turn. Okay. 80% of its maximum frost. So yeah, it starts at 10 and it like slowly goes up and up and up. That's really interesting. So the more they get frozen, the the higher their max cap goes. And that's what Pierce does. Pierce does damage based off of that. Interesting. So we could do like this. It doesn't change their max cap right now, but it would change it later. Okay, plus seven mana. Their new cap is 15. Uh, hello? Wait. <laughs> I don't... I'll overflow my mana, I guess? So this will go down to 16 plus 7. I mean, there's no reason to even do this. That was a pretty dead draw, but it was also a very safe draw. Yeah, the 25 frost thing is really interesting. That's huge. 12 shield and then draw one. That's not bad. Draw one non-mana card. Deal damage to all enemies equal to three times its cost. How do I check my uh, my deck? Hmm. It's not terrible. Three damage to the first enemy and give it bleed three. Create two thorn needles. 
Don't know what two thorn needles are. So do we have to draw a card? Wait. Oh, do we have to add a card? I'll take this if we have to. I guess I could have skipped past it. Maybe. We'll, we'll take a look. Got some kind of an event. With a bit of luck, you spot a small hidden cache of supplies near your path. Loot the cache. Will you inspect what you found? A group of assorted plant creatures charges at you. Fair enough. Ooh. Okay, we got three. Wait. You've been ambushed. A 50% chance of receiving critical damage. Don't like the sound of that. Uh, who's doing the most? You're doing the most. Okay, so stop. <laughs> now we're taking 13. Does this count as a mana card? It did not, but that one did. Okay, so we got you frosted. It's going to be easier to kill you with pierce. And, but we also know that you're going to... Yeah, you're going to become unfrozen next turn, and you'll be easier to kill because your cap will be higher. So I'll just run on that for now. We do take a little bit, but now we have a reason to ever heal. Can I spend all my mana? I can. That's actually legit. Twelve and eight, so we can do eighteen. Same deal there. You're doing a shield. It's no kill. Apply a debuff. I'm, I'm done, definitely gonna freeze you with this. We can't kill regardless. So we do that. We go down to zero, and then we go for focus. We gain four mana. We gain some mana. Gain some mana. All right. Not bad. Got back up to 14 here pretty easily. An AoE attack would be lovely. There's Pierce focus. Can't spend all my mana. So what's the deal with men? How much does it normally heal? I wish it said how much it could, could heal right away. Instead of just telling me what it does. I mean, I guess I could inspect in between combat, but still. 12. We got you on that. You're still frozen. That's huge. I'd like to draw a card. Hmm. Okay. Lose two ranks of... Are we losing two ranks of frost at the end of the turn? Alas. Uh, we might as well do that. We could pop you or try and... I'm going to try and save a situation. So we're taking eight. There's no reason to even use block here. It's a waste. I really like that system. Give me the AoE. Nice. Okay, six to all. What are you doing here? Death spores. Apply one powerful per rank to each ally on death. Not reduce at the end of the turn. Same deal. I don't want to don't want to waste too much here. We gave you powerful, I suppose, by doing that, but we're also gonna freeze you. We use all these. If I can't do two damage in a turn, then I don't deserve anything. Get out of here. Should have healed first. In hindsight. Okay, so I don't have the ability. To not choose a card. That's curious. Give vulnerable two to the first two enemies and deal six damage. Weak two to any enemy. Apply frost equal to 25% of your max mana. Oh, I like that. These cards are also very clearly related to this character. I know there are more characters than just this one. 
like I think they're oh, God, I don't want to speak out of my bottom but I think there's 10 yeah there's 10 characters that all have their own unique sets of skills okay interesting we'll apply shock we'll fill your shock bar when that gets filled shock bar of 10 okay when it's filled, you'll be shocked to take 100% bonus damage from the next attack. Got to check about turn orders here. I'm going to freeze you so the shield, mana shield doesn't matter. Ordering the heal three, we can definitely do. Because we're probably going to overflow anyways. Why not? Heal. Frost overflow. I guess... I should have looked at their shield. Does their shield go away? Maybe it does. Apply 8 shock. I'm assuming that this is my shock meter. To frost the first enemy is certainly going to be the right thing. Hmm. I think we just unload all of it. Okay, wait, no, the weak did apply to the shock. When filled up, your next attack will be, okay, much stronger. I mean, doesn't matter. I think we love single target as this character. I think we love it. 40 energy, equip an item. Active, deal one times five damage to the first enemy or gain 20 energy by discarding it. What is energy? Twenty energy for that's the portal device. I mean, I'll take it. Remove one. Okay, okay. So that's the thing. It, it trickles in removals by fighting elites. Okay. I don't think I want to get rid of my heal. I don't think I want to. I want to be very careful with ditching um, mana generating cards right now. I feel like focus... I feel like focus could go, though. Right? If you have zero mana... Like, it's it's so conditional that it's better than chilling focus. It can be, though. I don't think I'm ditching any of these. My damaging moves are too good. Meditate. I think, considering I added... Like, let's conceptually realize we've added meditate to our deck. I think we can remove focus. That's kind of like an equal trade. On top of the fact that we get this here. Conduct a bolt. Deal damage to any enemy equal to 120% of its maximum shock. Not that relevant to us right now. 12 damage to any enemy. Free if it is frozen. Draw one shatter whenever an enemy becomes frozen. This seems busted. Uh, I definitely want to fight another elite if we get card removal. Active trinkets. You have found a trinket with an active skill. Simply drag the card on screen to use it. Gotcha. Action trinkets can provide you with a card that can be used for free once per fight. Once per fight. Gotcha. Free if it's frozen. Can we freeze anybody? We can definitely freeze somebody. Okay. Frost, frost. No reason to shield up. That guy just seems scarier. Feel like I wanted to stun him more. Ice blast. Oh, so ideal. Wait, do we draw our... Oh, we draw shatter again. Oh my god. Yeah, shatter's broken. I love that. It's probably not actually broken. Like, I'm sure there's something in the game that's gonna make me be like, oh yeah, actually, it's just fine. Um, mind shield. I don't think we want to go for that. Let's just rock this and smile. We also got healed. This does not count as a mana card, right? Nah. But it also shouldn't matter, right? Do we have lethal? No, but you don't do enough to kill me anyways. We're one off lethal. We could, I guess we could dancing blade. 
that is a weird thing to think about. A trinket that is actually an active it is interesting. Remove. I'm going to choose my card first. Apply 20 frost to an enemy and then deal 20 damage if it's already frozen. 3 times 5 damage to the first enemy is also really good, though. I gotta admit, this is synergistic, but very expensive. So I think we need to... We can't remove a mana card for it. We have to remove something that costs something. Like a pierce. I feel like we could ditch pierce and then... Um, Shatter lets us juggle it very, very well. Okay, Mend is healing of 12. We could get rid of Mend. We could get rid of Block. I just... The moment I do that, I think we're going to have a problem. But I did add Mind Shield, so under the uh, the concept that I added Mind Shield, I'll say sure. I'll remove this shield. 8 and 8. Okay. That order for sure. Play this first. Our max mana goes up, so we can actually apply four frost with that. 18 damage for what it's worth. We do take six, and then we also get zap for six. See, this is the situation that's a little bit scarier, is these fools. Okay, so you're frozen. That's so much freeze. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. He doesn't... He didn't become frozen, so that makes sense. Oh, my God. Your, fro your freeze cap went up to... Uh, 25. Okay, so we still got to keep going. Get out of my life. Bye-bye. Okay, energy. We can equip an item. Upgrade one. Um... How can I see your upgrade with that? If, if I press this, does it... Okay. 16 damage to any enemy. Free if it's frozen. Draw a shatter whenever an enemy becomes frozen. I mean, it seems... Good. It's that or 26 frost. Makes it more likely that I will have them frozen. Shatter is going to be something I can cast, like, more reliably. Equip item. Your strikes deal all of their damage at once. Strikes to hit the first enemy can now hit any enemy. Strike damage plus four. I think that's a specific type of attack, right? Spell, spell. Skill, skill, skills. Mana. I feel like that's a thing I don't have. For science, we'll take it. Choose a card first. Frenzied Flux. Man, yeah. Like, having elites give you specific cards. Critical 2. Deal 10 times 2 damage to any enemy and apply 10 shock. Then shuffle 2 shock spasms into your deck. I don't know what that card is. I would say it's the game is missing that one minor thing. I'm holding down on this card right now, to be clear. It's not showing. Like, that is one, like, critical feature for quality of life that I would like to see improve before 1.0. If a card is going to give you other cards... There we go. Wait, it's showing now. Okay. There we go. What? Never mind. I'm just... I'm, I'm wrong. It's just... If you click the card, it doesn't show up. Click. See, look at that. It doesn't show up. Hover. Shows up. Click. It just actively won't show up. So there's just something up with that, I guess. Okay, gotcha. Apply three fixed shock to yourself. Removed. Gotcha. So it's not it's not a good thing. Critical, your attacks have a 50% chance of dealing critical damage. Do 150% damage by default. I don't think that that's going to be that good. Singularity, 60 damage to any enemy. Uh, gain two mana, create a temporary copy of the next one non-temporary spell you play sure 
<gasps> that plus the free shatter. Oh my god, that's so good. That's such a good angle. Uh, so that's a gain mana card. I could ditch a gain mana card as well. I'm leaning towards maybe removing Icy Chains. Maybe. 12 Frost, any enemy. Could be a lot. I could ditch the Mend and say who cares. Magic Blast is a bit expensive now, but it is nice to have an AoE-focused angle. Pierce was really good in that last fight. I don't know. Do I... I don't have to remove a card, but I probably should. Um, we added Twinning Ritual. Stands to reason we could get rid of a um, another mana card. Stands to reason. We'll see. Check an event, maybe? See what else there is? Along your trail, you find a small cairn with a statuette in it. A few scattered curios like this one can be found in the ether. Aether, sorry. Rivals of Aether ruined me. Created over the years by spiritual adventurers. Surprisingly, they seem to slowly gather magical energy. Meditate, sharpen your weapons, repair your armor. Gather lingering energy. Start the next four fights with powerful two. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so there's Shatter. Issue being I can't freeze anybody. We, we'll grab the shielding. Create a temporary copy of the next one non-temporary spell. Shoot. I wish I could freeze. It has to be this turn, yeah. I mean, I could shatter, and I could kill somebody. For six mana, I could kill one of them. Kind of expensive, but also that guy's just gone now. That seems that's such a good card. I got poisoned. Take one fixed damage per rank at the end of the turn, then reduce ranks to half, random down. Affected by damage formula and can consume shocked. Ooh. Uh fixed damage ignores bonuses, penalties from items, buffs, and debuffs. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, you're going to be doing 12 to me. I definitely want you frozen more than anything. Yeah, we drew, like, all of our mana stuff, and then we drew a whole bunch of... <laughs> then we drew all of our expensive stuff. So, <laughs> that didn't work very well. Okay, Shatter. Are you going to get frozen again? Do we overflow you? It, it became free last time. You are frozen, but you didn't become frozen. I wonder why the boss became frozen a second time. Like, why did it count that this one doesn't? Is it because you were at 15 at a base? I think that might be it. We could make it free by doing this. Oh, it would have been free. It's... The, okay. Okay. The reason it said it was free is because there was only one target. Understood. That's it was actually like a good quality of life thing. It just it didn't want to lie to me because when there was only one enemy, it just automatically lets you know that it is going to be free no matter what. Understood. Don't have twinning. This shouldn't matter. Choose a card. Sure. Shatter another shatter. Six shield and a f and frost barrier. Apply six frost on the first two enemies. Now that's actually a little bit more interesting. Apply two fixed frost when hit. Increase your max status by two. 
Uh, applying frost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fixed effects. Two fixed frost when hit increase your max status by two. I don't know what that means. The max status of whatever status is currently being applied to me. It's a tricky one between the two here. Because another shatter just sounds broken. Fine. I really love the monster card system, though, and I do want to interface with it more. As you walk around a small curve in the forest path, you immediately notice a group of small muntrooms already looking directly towards you, but they're not making any aggressive move. Passively walk through. This is a conditional option. It's visible because your deck contains enough of the required cards. You're playing a certain character or any other conditions are indicated. These are often better than usual alternatives. Oh. The first few ones seem to sit and watch you. You notice a few more mushrooms looking at you from the bushes. They're not aggressive. Make some fireworks. Five spell cards. With a loud bang, a circular spark lights over the forest. Colorful reflections can be seen on human leaves around you. You didn't expect such a beautiful outcome of your made-up spell. After a moment, you enjoy your to enjoy your feet. Many of the small creatures make a reward pile before hurrying off. Okay. Oh, we got four now. I'm glad I went for that uh, that shield move now. can catch shatter okay so we will still only draw one i was hoping that having two would make us whatever gain one rank every time you draw five extra cards increase the cost of non-mana cards drawn by one per rank what the heck what is that all about Winning ritual. Sure. Who's doing the most to me? 18, 4, so we can do 22. Then we can kill it. Then we can twinning ritual again. 22, it's it's most cost effective to do this, technically. One of these two. And we're not taking damage anyways. Holy. Twinning, twinning Ritual is nuts. Alright. But it, it does... It made us run the risk of having a, uh, a bad turn this time. Clearly I was like poisoned or something. There's something happening... Uh, in regards to like poison damage or something that we're taking that I'm not noticing happening. You know happened to us. Do I need that heal? No. But I think we can um, finish this fight cleanly. Shatter. Chill certainly can... Uh, yeah, we can definitely kill somebody with that. Doing 10 damage. You're doing. We have 5 armor. Oh, that's what it is. Our shield doesn't go back up to 10. Gotcha. We don't regen back up to 10 shield. 10 shield's just our maximum. That's an aspect that makes sense, but was not in... I was not informed. It does make sense, though. You're already frozen? So I'll kill that one. It doesn't... There's no plus here. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if there is another character... Oh man. We would have a... We would have a nuts turn right there. Absolutely nuts. Gain four mana and one fatigue. Debuff, gain one rank every time you draw five extra cards. Increase the cost of non-mana cards drawn by one per rank every time they're drawn. At the end of the turn, lose all ranks and remove the cost. Increase the affected cards. Cannot be cleansed and ignores purity. Okay. Six damage to the first enemy. Gain reflect one this turn per damage dealt. So it's like thorns. Damage equal... To 70% of your max mana damage modifiers are halved for this card. Eh. I'm most interested in just getting the straight up mana. Okay. 
and choose it. Wait. You restore up to 30% of your maximum health and choose an additional random bonus. I, is this something I only I can do once per like zone or what? Find yourself a quiet place to spend the night. Restore another 15 health. I mean, irrelevant, but I'll remove a card. Four mana and a fatigue, I'm going to say should hopefully... I don't know. Mend is not proving to be that important. We have the other shield card now. Let's ditch mana shield, I guess. It's it's weird. Like, if we draw wrong, we are gonna be in a rough spot for mana. Okay. Uh, twinning ritual shatter is lovely. Apply arcane. Applying arcane will fill the target's arcane bar. When it's filled, you take 10 fixed damage and the first detonation will dispel one. Frozen and shocked increase damage by five each. Okay. Fifteen. Fourteen. We actually don't have enough to freeze unless we go for you. So we do this. Good. Yes. Shatter! 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 Um, we just buffed them up by a lot, though. I don't have any shielding. Hopefully this is like, um... Ugh. Incoming, we're gonna be taking 11, which unfortunately is enough to fill it up again. That's alright. They have mighty. Alright. 10, 11. The 11 doesn't do anything to us right now. The issue is I also don't have enough to fill up your your meter. And I have no shield. Yep. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions. Bold of you to finally show up. I'll hit you with it. We'll take a, we'll take a smacking here. Recovery tutorial in Breach Wanderers. You can only heal up to your recovery stat. Whenever you're missing more health than your recovery stat, your maximum health will be reduced. For example, you start with 100 maximum health and 15 recovery. If your health drops to 80 and your maximum health will be reduced to 95. Wait, your health drops to 80, your max health will be reduced to 95. What the hell? Your health is precious. Make sure to use shield cards to protect it. Resting ignores this rule, allowing you to recover your lost max health. That is terrifying and legit at the same time. In one rank, every time you draw five extra cards. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Increase the cost of non-mana cards drawn by one. At the end of the turn, lose all the ranks and remove the costs. Yeah. So, it shouldn't be that relevant right now. Well, that was enough to kill, that's right. Okay, 12 over here. Let's pop you. Shatter. Shatter. I mean, we're pretty darn strong when there's only a couple. Fatigue tutorial. Thank you. Okay, good. So we didn't have to try. Drawn many cards in a single turn. You've applied... No, that's not true. But okay. Increase the cost of all non-amanda cards drawn per turn. You can keep track of how many cards you've drawn this turn here. So it's just it's just an overflow. Like if you just draw a million cards. I think I'll want that next turn. So does it go away right now? So if I play it at the end of the turn, it doesn't really matter? Yeah, it just doesn't really matter. Oh, man. Oh, you poor sap. Oh, you poor sap. God. We could have go We could have kept going. We could have kept going. Victory. Depth 1. 
Wait, oh my god. The potential for a roguelike deck builder that has sh short runs? Default deck of Raudan. Victory Depth 1. New cards unlocked. You can now s edit your starting deck. Give Frostbite 4 to all enemies. Apply 3 fixed frost to yourself. Choose any enemy. If it's frozen, draw 2. If the frost bar is empty, apply 32 frost to it. Ooh, that's a good card. 15 damage to all enemies with Frostbite. All right. Now, here we go. I'm scared. I'm scared. Please. It's so cool. Please, don't. Don't take it from me. Welcome to town. Here you can find various buildings to make your otherworldly travels a bit more pleasant. The forge allows you to purchase permanent upgrades for your heroes. Of course it does. The market allows you to purchase items before a run to give you a better chance of success. The bounties board provides you with a constant stream of bounties to complete for Ether. Ether lets you open card packs. You can tap here to view the cards you have unlocked so far, as well as monster cards that you've encountered. Finally, you can unlock new cards by opening packs with Aether. Sorry. Uh, you have enough to open two packs right now, so you should try it. Cool. Is that something that we can put those cards in any character's deck? Unlock the guild halls where you can access the game's quests. Quests are unique adventures that allow you to unlock new cards as well as some crucial progression elements like the depth system. That's what I'm curious about. I don't mind. Do I prefer it? No. But I don't mind permanent progression strength stuff if there's also going to be a, a, like an ascension scaling system that eventually outpaces the meta progress, if that makes sense. So like, it can always be a challenge. You currently have the access or access to one quest, Force Investigation. Completing this quest will unlock Depth 2, which allows you to go deeper uh, into the ether when starting a new run and face stronger foes. Gotcha. Good deal. Good to know. Difficulty easy unlocks Depth 2. Understood. Okay, so it does sound like there is an increasing difficulty system that will be running alongside it, which, good. Uh, Mark Saul's, you'll be able to purchase up to zero, from zero up to one items from the market before every run. Does it cost, does it cost your gold, though? Freeze enemy bounty complete. So it turned into a new bounty. Unlock a bounty slot. Deal 50 damage with one card. Oh, this is interesting. I gotta admit, this is a... I can't deny. This is a fun way to do this system. There, there's some really fun elements to how you're doing it. Uh, you'll be presented with two choices when you receive an item reward instead of one. You begin each run with more bonus energy for your artifact. Begin run with more rest supplies. Restore. Okay. Okay. This isn't that bad. This is not bad. Increase your maximum health by... Uh, up to wait <laughs> wait does it go up to 50 percent and recoverable health by five it... probably one of the bigger ones spyglass just curious so where was the was this what it said for upgrading my my heroes in specific the market this is i'm curious about why'd my money go down guild hall this is where we had the quests so yeah, th these are not bad. These are these are not too bad. I'm not I'm not expressly that bothered. This one being the most concerning, uh, concerning of them. Take that. Reroll an item or card once. The uh, yeah, these are not that bad. I don't mind them. Open a card pack. Apparently we have enough for another. Ooh, mana blast. I do want to see what it looks like to. Uh, to pitch a new run like if i go over to the guild hall and i say oops say yes i want to do this begin that so we we mark that as our journey Woo. got oh well i wish i would have known that these cost gold welcome to the character screen you can view the hero list on the left of the screen gotcha see your current hero and change the color of their outfit here oh that's fun these are the base stats of your heroes these are their passive skills you unlock more of them as you level up your heroes. Gotcha. You can view various decks and create new ones here. Let's edit your current deck. Welcome to the starting deck editor. You, at level 3, you'll be able to edit the pool of cards you see during a run. 
Oh, at level three, you'll be able to edit the pool of cards you can see during a run. What the hell? Edit the name of your deck and its icon here. You just need to have at least one card in your deck to change the icon. You can use these buttons to cycle through filters. This is your deck list. As a guideline, I'd recommend you try and have four mana, four offense, two block cards, two utility. Okay, I mean, that's really cool. And it does look like I can add anything in. Noting that the deck can only have... You can only have 12 in the start. So that's, that's good. It's good that you can't get too crazy with it. But the thing is, can't you just unlock, like... Am I, am I wrong? Can you not just unlock, like, those busted legendary cards and start with, the like, a full stacked deck already and never never want to add or remove cards to your deck in the run that that it's it's a bit concerning it's a bit concerning in that in that context like in the end with a fully completed save file for example like i'm pi picturing a situation where you make the deck that you were gonna have for the whole run immediately and then you never want to interface. No, okay, actually that's a, okay, hold on. Well, no, it's kind of, I was gonna say it's kind of a clever way of handling uh, handling the uh, the system with the removals because you do have to add a lot of cards to your deck more than you, you seem like more than you can remove on average um, unless you take a lot of elite fights. So I guess it's not entirely that way, but it is a little bit interesting. Uh. Yeah, a bunch of characters that you can unlock based off of gold. I'll admit, it, it's... Okay, it's legit, though. Okay, and you can even just, like... This is super cool that you can do this. Like, I would have never anticipated that it would just allow me to. So I certainly can't be mad there. Switch pose? Okay, there's there's a lot of really, really cool stuff here. And I will say, the way that they're doing this system seems seems pretty good. If, and I assume it is the case that, actually I know it's the case, that the deeper dives uh, will eventually get more and more difficult. It's actually a really clever way of handling it. Uh, and it's really cool. I think it's a very fun system. I enjoy it a lot. I can't wait to see more of what they've got. I, as always, especially in a, in a strategy roguelike with like strong meta progression, stuff like this, I will always say the same thing I always say. I would love to see a mode that is balanced without it in mind um, or something, you know, like just this is the mode that you can play right now that doesn't have any of that stuff and you just are playing a correctly balanced one, like the intended difficulty level. That's always something that I do enjoy in a game like this. Uh, instead of trying to, you, you, you know, you grind out and you try and figure out, well, when am I playing the intended difficulty, right? Like... When, it, when am I playing something that is balanced right? Because otherwise it might get too easy too fast or it'll get too hard too fast. And often it feels clunky. But remains to be seen on on this game. Uh, and I think that... I don't know. I can't lie. It's a, it's a really cool... It's a really cool meta system. Uh, one that I actually would like to engage with. Uh, with a couple concerns here and there. Those being... I really hope that the collection system doesn't completely make uh drafting in a run irrelevant because that is a pretty major part of a roguelike deck builder is building your deck and it'd be weird to only build it right away and then just constantly have cards slapped in your face that you keep just well let me add one remove and then remove it next time let me add one and remove it next time that'd be kind of weird but ultimately it's a far off problem and i maybe the game has something in place to solve it uh, alas, alas, that is that. That's going to do it here for today. Thank you for watching. I really enjoyed this. I liked it a lot. I'd love to play more of it. This is Breach Wanderers. I can guarantee I'll check it out when it comes out in 1.0, but I honestly might have to check it out more before that because, like, if you have a meta progress system that I want to interface with like this, then uh, you've got something good going on. Uh, alas, alas, that is that. Thank you for watching. Check the channel for Roguelike some more every single day, and I will see you next time. Bye.